image, uh, which is uh, says it's covering an area about five miles uh, southwest of Ellensburg, Washington. Uh, does that sound right? That's that's about the neck of the woods we're talking about. Well, in this neck of the woods, there is one great big white blotted out area where I presume, uh, were I to be able to see it, and it does look like a very interesting area, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, there would be Mel's Hole somewhere there, huh? Yeah, that, that I think that blotch yes. over there covers like a four-mile four by eight-mile area. My goodness. But uh, What a blotch. Uh, isn't that something? Yes, isn't that? My, my uh, nephew told me about that, and uh, I said, well, you son of a gun. You well, he's right. <laughs> We've got it up on the website right now. People can go take a look for themselves. So now we have uh, pinned down better than ever before hey. the area where Mel's Hole actually is. Thank you, Mel. That was uh, that's damn good research. Uh, by, by the way, not too far from there on the uh, uh, highway that uh, goes to Yakima, I think it's 84 or 85. Yes. There's a rest stop. And I had a lot of reports from a lot of people that if they look towards the Manastash, they will see the black beam of light. They have seen it. I have had uh, truckers, I've had uh, people in town say, that's where I was, I was looking towards it, and I saw the flash of black light. Well, now, maybe my audience is not aware, but a television crew uh, went up to Ellensburg after we did the last program mm -hmm. and uh, researched this. And I'll be doggone, they didn't find the hole, but they did find uh, near the area where you were talking about a lot of military boot oh, prints oh, and yeah. all kinds of uh, information that would in indicate the military, in fact, had been there or was there. Oh, they would have probably seen a lot of yellow gear tread marks in the um, yep. Uh, ground. Yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. You name it, it was there. But uh, my, my nephew uh, coughed that little piece of information up for me, and uh, uh, I thought I'd pass that along to our listeners. Well, wait till people get a load of this. Uh, and, and they can ask, why is it that that pretty innocuous? I mean, it, from from you know all intents and purposes, very there there's not a military base right there. Well, who knows? Well, I mean, you know, I, you know what I'm saying. Not an obvious one. Very close to my property, <laughs> there was the Yakima firing range, this and I will incredible. tell you that they have expanded the area of the Yakima firing range and also expanded the uh, the fly zone over it uh -huh. correspondingly <laughs> uh, isn't this also interesting it, 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 it's just it's all it's all there well, uh, all right earlier in the program before you got on Mel uh, somebody fast blasted me and I consider this a really good question okay um, it is what are the odds of any single one person uh, finding two apparently bottomless or endless holes in one lifetime. The odds against that have got to be gazillions to one. But oh, then I oh, oh, oh yeah, and in, in fact so you don't even you don't you can't even consider odds, you know. That's, uh, that's right. So right. out of outlandish. Uh, and, and oh by the way, one other thing before oh. before we even get to that, uh, Richard Hoagland called uh, at the top of the hour. Oh. And said, "You know what art, you're right. Normal time travel could not explain what he just talked about, but there is one thing that could. And that is a parallel universe." Hmm. That is to say, a universe in which similar things occurred, but uh, with very different outcomes. And uh, a lot of our best scientific minds now, Mel, are saying that, uh, indeed, that uh, that could w very well be the case. Uh, you know, there could be a universe in which the Nazis won the war. And so there could be a universe in which the dime that you came to be in possession of on that so property. So the B on it might have stood for Berlin. There you go. Oh, my God, Berlin. <laughs> B, I forgot about that. Um, all right, uh, listen. Uh, anyway. So, I, so, so there there we are. And, and uh, the, the, only, the only thing, a few things I will add to this, uh, just to, to get us current, okay? Yes, yes. Is that I had reports from uh, some of my trucker buddies. One said he delivered a huge quantity of fiber optic cable. Really? To a warehouse in Ellensburg. Now, okay, I don't know. We're talking a huge quantity of uh, to a warehouse. Now, let's it, see. What might they want to do with fiber optics? But he told me that all the guys that were there that were 
in in the office there and uh, at the warehouse where he had to load this stuff in. They were all Israelis. What? They were all Israelis. Now, it's really going to tick me off if the Israelis have our hole. Well, this is what he told me. I mean, that is our hole. It's a U.S. hole. It's on our, our land here. That's right. But he said that the people that took delivery of that were Israelis. Now, mm. I talked with another trucker. I love the truckers. The truckers are... I can tell. I love them. They're good guys, I know. Oh, they're the best in the world. They are. They actually are. Delivered, apparently, to the same warehouse, a number of crated instruments, large crated instruments mm. from Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. Oh, gee. California ended up in a warehouse facility in Ellensburg. So that's pretty Ooh. much where I am with Ellensburg. I told you about the coin. I told you about the, the, the deliveries. Yes. Pretty much up to date. Now it suddenly brings a whole belt buckle thing down in San Fran into focus. My God, that's incredible, man. Uh, that, 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 that's, that's incredible. I mean, you, you know, it's funny, Art. You look at some things and you don't put two into You say it's a dime. I mean, I told you about it. It's a 1943 Roosevelt dime. Yeah. What the heck? That's a dime. What, what, what are you, you know, going boohoo about your dime? Until you realize... Well, it, it all was alive, it finally all drove it home to me. All right, well, all right. Again, that was that was me too. I I I had these things in my hand. I did little soldering around them and stuff. I mean, I sure. you know, so don't, don't feel bad. All right, now now let uh, in view of time here. Okay, uh, let, let's 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 move this forward. I'm, yeah, I'm, let, I'm, let's. Uh, you uh, connected obviously because I guess of the plants that you grow, the herbs yeah. and all the rest of it with Native Americans, right? Yeah, yeah I, and and. Uh, all I'm going to tell you about them, I don't want to give the name of the tribe because I don't want a bunch of people running down to me there. Uh, these are very poor people. As you know, a lot of the Indians on the reservation are very poor people. Now, this is in Nevada, right? In Nevada. Okay. okay. Here in my state. Uh, and uh, there are uh, tribes uh, up there. Uh, that well, because of, of the kind of work you did, uh, the metallic work you did in belt buckles and the herbs you grow, I can easily understand the connection you would have with the... Uh, some Native Americans. So you, you connected with these Native Americans. Well, they connected with me. They, they actually contacted me through oh. email Oh. And, and said, look, would you be interested in coming down and discussing with us, you know, what you're doing, the research that you're doing, and, you know, talk about, you know, I, I have no, believe me, Art, I have no commercial interest in this at all, but they do. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Fine. Um, you know, there's not going to be a patented bottle of Mel's magic elixir here okay <laughs> yeah, okay fine this is this is their thing but we you know we swap notes we talked around a lot and there are some specific uh, they knew who you were because of my program because and because of the show yeah. coverage and yeah okay um and, and uh so i i went down there and this was uh, in early september of uh last year oh okay well this this was actually before 9 11 right Okay, but uh, shortly before that. Early, uh, was, early uh, September. I was uh, pretty much incommunicado, basically, during that whole time, and strangely enough, so a lot of this stuff is news to me. All right. Uh, so, you know, we're over there, and, um, you know, they, they had done a lot of good work. They had cataloged a lot of plants. You know, we talked plants. I'm sure all this plant stuff is boring. And I asked them if they knew. Uh, loc uh, and, and I told them, I, I said, the plants that seemed to work the best were the plants that I had been growing on my property, and I described to them which ones they were. And uh, uh, this was it, the hole near Washington, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And 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 and, uh, and so obviously you unraveled the story of the hole to them. Well, well, they they were they were aware they were they, they were all right thing too. All right. And so uh, I says, can you in your gathering and in your research and your studies have you found this specific variety? And I said because this was the variety that grew by the property. And that's where I ended up at the second all, is because they took me directly to, not for the whole in particular. Well, then it's obvious to me that they knew your reputation. Right. They knew uh, the whole story of the whole, and the real motivation for inviting you down there, aside from the herbs and the rest of it, was that they had a whole of their own. Well, the, the whole itself, and we're going to get into the whole, I guess, deeply, for lack of a better term. But uh, 
Um, now you're guilty. I'm sorry, Art. Uh, uh, but ba basically, the hole is not on their property. Okay. I mean, you know, basically, their connection, you know, to get from the reservation or where the Indians are to the uh, the hole is they know. But where you're it is. you're telling me this hole is in my state. In the state of Nevada. In the state of, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, if you looked at the picture of uh, uh, of where the Manastash is in Washington, and right. try to find similar pictures in Nevada, you probably find it there, too. We have very similar-looking terrain. To it be really sure. is. That's why I love That's why I love, I love the high desert. That's my, my kind of land. Uh, so but anyway, they... so I'm up there, and this land is used by members of the Basque. B A S Q U E community. All right. The Basque are yeah, I don't, the Basque are interesting people, and they basically came out to uh, uh, your state and a couple of other states, basically for uh, raising sheep of all things. Okay. And so they are shepherds, and so I am introduced to the what is now the second hole. All right. Tell me about this. I mean, they took you to it. They took me there. I was, I was not, I did not go all the way up to the hole, but there was conversations between uh, uh, the Native Americans and the Basque and the blah, 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 and they basically uh, uh, agreed that, you know, everything was as it should be, that I wasn't, you know, from CNN or the FBI or the CIA or right, whatever. Right, right. Uh, and so I went there, and uh, uh, I got to see the hole. Now, all right. What's there? What it is, is that if you, you know, walking up to it, uh, and, and first of all, this is in a fairly pristine area, okay, so there's like uh, uh, no real signs of civilization around there. There's no uh, no roads leading into it. There's no uh, 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 telephone wires, nothing like that. I mean, we're, we're talking pristine area. Right. No, uh, no signs of, except for their habitation, no signs of habitation. Gotcha. Okay, you're walking up to it, and what you see sticking out of the ground is uh, a nine... Well, the hole itself is the same dimension as the one in Ellsberg. It's wow. Wide. Nine feet nine, in diameter? Nine feet in diameter. This one had a metal collar around it. A metal collar? Metal. Solid metal collar. That rose from uh, about how... two feet high and about two feet deep. Metal collar, and it had some notches in it that you could look like... In my estimation, you could mate something with it, you know, to lock it in place. And it, it could possibly have been like a locking collar. You mean something thing. was, uh, it looked, in other words, it looked like something intended to lock to it from above? Exactly. Something would be lowered onto it and wow. locked into place. Okay. But the, the Basque tell me that this property or this hole here has been there for all of their experience, and they have been there since the 1800s just the way it is but the same hole on not their land they don't own this land art this is probably government u.s government land well the majority of land here in nevada is blm well exactly your land management it's, uh, not, so. it's not they don't own it they use the land you know they they gray sheep blah blah blah, blah that sort of thing they and do. how long have they known of this hole do you know well uh again uh, one fellow I know says he he knew this from when he was a young man and he was well into his late eighties and so he 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 knew it from probably for the last seventy years. All right, because of what you did, we know a lot, at, at least quite a bit about your hole up in uh, near Ellensburg. But yes. this hole, what do we know about this hole other than its diameter? It's the diameter, and apparently it is lined with that same metal as far as you can see. You're, well, you're kidding. It is it is solidly lined as far as you can see. So this is not a natural hole by any stretch. There's there's nothing natural about this hole at all. Nothing. Can you all. tell what kind of metal it is? No, but I'll tell you one thing. And it was kind of a kind of an accident, but I dropped the box wrench on it. Right. Uh, you know, on the ledge. Yes. Made no noise. No, no noise. Noise whatsoever. You know, you drop a box wrench on a metal floor. Clank. Clank. Nothing. You know, we repeat the experiment. Blank. Nothing, 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 nothing. It makes no... You could pound on that thing with a sledgehammer, and it won't make noise. Okay? Oh, no. This is what I'm telling you about right now, is that this one here is so different from the one that I had in Ellensburg. Like, totally different. Uh, mostly because of this metal. 
uh, around it. But well, when you, when you touch the metal, does it feel metallic? Is it cold as metal? Oh, would... this, this, <laughs> wow. This, this is interesting because a lot, a lot of the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, the fellows that, that are there, and there was, there was five of us at, you know, towards the end of it, and started with two, and we ended up with five. But uh, what they say when they're up there, even in the winter time, they can they can like uh, put their uh, uh, tent and sleeping bag right up against it, keep them nice and warm. Warm. Yes, it keeps them nice and warm. But it is not hot. You know, it's not like you know like a fire hot. But the metal itself over there Ra- the radiates. Um, I, uh, I, I, I don't even know how to describe it there. An, it, in other it, words, if you touch it with your hand, is it hot, or does it just no. produce radiant heat? That it, 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 there is heat around it, but it itself is not hot. How, how does uh, that? Oh, this is really weird, Mel. So they, they are, you know, that's what you know. That that's the thing there, and so uh, we have we have this, uh, you know, all in there, and, they, and again, from my understanding. They have known about that hole up there. It's uh, for uh, it, it has been known since the 1800s. It has been known exactly the way it is. Uh, I can tell you that uh, some of the people that I talked with uh, uh, towards the end of uh, everything on my way back uh, said it was a spiritual site for them up there. Uh, I asked the uh, the uh, native spiritual site. All right. Mel, so you, you've got this metal around the hole, uh, about, uh, you said, a foot or two high. Two, two feet high, two, two feet, feet high. high. And two feet wide, and the hole is nine feet in diameter, and as far as you can see, the metal continues down. This is no geographic uh, hole, this is no volcano vent, or if it is, it's been modified by somebody. Well, if it's been modified, it's been modified... Um I'm going to say long before the technology that we know of today. To do it. Mm-hmm. And it looks like there was something that should be latching to this okay. hole from above. Uh, so, so it, 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 the, I'm going to call the thing on top of collar, okay? And that, that's, that's, that's We'll call it the collar, all right. And, and it looked like there was notches in it, and it looked like you could lock something into place or line something up in it. Gotcha. It didn't move. I mean, the whole thing was solid. It's solid metal. But there are places where there are notches in it, and something is meant to orient, uh, in my opinion. All okay. right. What did the uh, the Basques or the uh, Native Americans tell you about what they knew of the depth of this hole? In other words, I'm sure they've thrown things into oh. it or oh. have experimented with trying to find out how deep it is or something, right? Well, I, actually, they didn't They didn't do anything with lowering uh, uh, line it or anything to it, but they, they did relate to me the same phenomenon as... Uh, uh, that I had described uh, one uh, the fear of animals going by it. Uh-huh. Uh, their dogs won't do it. Nothing. They they have nothing to do with it. There. Uh, they too have spoken of the black uh, beam. <laughs> uh, they've spoken of that. Uh, um, what kind of? What do you mean black beam? Uh, but, uh, from time to time, a uh, black beam. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this this is a contradiction, but a black beam of light, okay, comes. From the hole, it lasts for a very short time, but it, it just goes directly up into the sky. And and when you look at it, it looks like a black beam. In other words, as opposed to if a it, lighted sky. If you had a flashlight and it, and, and it was capable of throwing off a black, not not a black light like we used to have back in the '60s, you know, with all that stuff, but black, <laughs> solid black. Yeah, uh, gotcha. Uh, that, that that that's what. It, 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 there's no way to describe it. There's no. Uh, uh, I, I am one of the few people that I, I've had other people tell me about it. I have never personally witnessed the black beam. You did perform some experiments on this hole, didn't you? Okay, let, let, let me let me talk about the first one. And 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 I'm not I'm not a scientist. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a researcher. But the first the first thing that we did is we had uh, a whole bunch of uh, uh, say, uh, Safeway or. Uh, 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 7-Eleven bags of ice. Uh huh. You know the kind that you buy. You know, and we had a couple bags of that. So we had put one in a bucket on the surface, and we lowered another bucket of ice into the uh, hole, fifteen hundred oh. feet. Fifteen hundred feet. Yeah, we we had access to a nice winch and about that much. We only had fifteen hundred feet of line, and that's what we. What was the idea of lowering ice into it? Well, well, first of all, the, you know, the, my, my curiosity was is that I wanted to know. 
it was was it hot or cold down there? Okay. So we basically waited for the ice to melt about halfway on the surface, and we would hoist up the. Uh, oh, I see. So uh, your ice, your, you had test ice on the surface. Yeah. To see there how that is melting. Oh, I got you. Of, I got you. I got you. Of, okay. uh, you know your 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 garden variety convenience store ice, right. you know, That you you buy anywhere, and, and nothing magic about it or anything like right. that. Right. Right. And so we lowered it down there. We waited for the ice to, to melt uh, on the surface there, and it got about half melty, you know. So it was sitting in a bowl of, uh, uh, in, a, in a bucket of water with a few bits of ice floating around. We brought it up, and the ice in the bucket did not melt. It didn't melt. It was not melted. So we said, I mean, this was on the... Now, wait a minute. Now, um, the hole had been radiating, uh, in some strange way, mm -hmm. heat enough that people would camp by it, yeah, they they did that in the winter time. But it doesn't melt ice. It didn't melt the ice. I'm down, it came up there. It was. We looked in the bucket. We had ice cubes in there. Did anything come back up with the uh, with the ice cubes? We we we, we had ice cubes. You know, I reached in the bucket at ice cube. I picked one up there. So in other words, nothing else. Dirt, water, anything else. No, nothing it, else. The, the stuff. The, the stuff appeared pretty much the way we had sent it down, uh, with, with the exception of when I put my hand in the ice, the ice wasn't cold. Felt like ice. What? It wasn't cold. This is what I'm saying. It wasn't cold. You know, you, you pick up a piece of ice, you put it in your hand. It's cold. It melts, and, and it's cold. In fact, it makes you cold by melting. That's, that's how cold works. Right. Well, it, 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 didn't, it wasn't cold, and in the hand, it didn't melt. So then, it, now they're more like blocks of glass. Yeah, I, I would say so. But we said, oh, okay, what we'll do here is we'll take this bucket and we'll stick it on the fire. And we had a little place to cook there. Stick the... The, uh, the bucket with the unmelted ice? Unmelted you ice. You put on a fire? We put it on, like, our cooking fire there. Okay. And we had a little table and cooking area and stuff over there. and uh, uh, So we put it on there, and the ice catches fire. What the cubes catch fire and and and, and I guess m maybe uh, catching fire might be the w wrong, wrong word. That the, uh -huh. the ice it, we, we we took it off the fire right away, and so we set it on the on the dirt, and the stuff in the bucket was still burning. And again, burning might not be the right thing. It was given off heat. And was it, was, it given, was there a flame? It was not so much a flame as a kind of a. a Ooh. Oh, you, have you ever used a gas stove? Sure. Okay. It was like the barest turning a, a gas stove on. It was like it was glowing like that last flicker before you turn it off completely. That's what it was like around all the cubes. And you could you could knock the cubes around and separate them, and each one of them, you know, would would do, exhibit the same properties. Holy smokes! I I, I will tell you that this bucket. Well, some of the bucket there is still sitting there, as far as I know today, still doing what it was doing the day we put it into the ground and brought it up. So, so this this was September, and this is January now. That's how long it's been doing what I what I call burning. Uh, um, what one guy took some of the stuff home. He put it in his wood stove. And, you know, he's got a cabin out there, and, you know, it gets damn cold where he is, and the thing has been keeping his place warm. Yeah, northern Nevada is very cold. Oh, it is. It, uh, it, uh, uh, well, so, so this is like giving off eternal heat? I, I, I you know, or, I, again, or when I, it's, it, if I'm getting, I, I'm not sure I've got this right. It, 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 is, it is, makes, it, look. It was neutral. When it came out of the well, it was neutral. It felt neutral. In other words, we you, put it on the fire. And it appeared, again, my, my terminology, this is very bad because... It, it acted like a fuel. It, 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 look, it will look like, if, if I understand combustion, it was like it was doing combustion in a different way than, than we, we would attribute combustion to mixing air with fuel and creating heat and, and flame. It was, but it was doing kind of the same thing, is what I'd like to say. And uh, it's been burning like that since, again, burning is the wrong word, but that's all I got for it. I don't know how to describe this process since early September. Hi. And again, a guy has, he took about uh, 
a coffee can worth of this stuff and put it, took it home and put it in his wood stove in his cabin. You know, no wood in there. Yes. And the thing has been going since then. Now, we have tried this experiment of just the lowering of the bucket because we figure we could, boy, we'd like to have a lot of this stuff here. Oh, of course. You know, so, and sometimes we would go down there and we would get nothing. Sometimes we would get melted. Sometimes, you know, uh, not melted but real ice. But every so often, this process duplicates itself. So we come up with the same thing. But it isn't like... You know, every time you you throw, you know, you you, you lower a bucket full of stuff there that uh, that it's going to happen every time. It doesn't happen every single time. A quarter of the time, an eighth of the time. Oh, um, I'd say one out of three times. One out of three. One one out of three, and and I don't I don't know if it is, was the amount of time down do, there. Do you possess any of this yourself? I, I took nothing with me, Art. I I uh, would not. Uh, uh, what what is the word? I you know, the, this is theirs for now. Um, to say for now, okay? What about noise? Did it, 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 At any point, did it make any noise? No, we, we, we never... We, during this, this process that we went through, uh, it made no noise at all. It made no noise, and we did not notice anything from the surface, anything particularly unusual. Okay, at all. I mean, there was, you know, it's just. But were there any markings on this metal uh, that were discernible? In other words, anything uh, marked or scratched in English or any other language? Well, we we went we went we went at it with a a, a hacksaw blade. You couldn't you couldn't hacksaw it. You couldn't even dent it. No, no. It, the, the metal the metal itself, from what I, I can determine, and and and. and I, I mean, normally if you have a metal thing that's hollow, you could tap on it, and you would hear that it's hollow. Right. But with this thing here, you know, if you're beating on it with a, you know, like a, a tire iron, no it doesn't noise. make any noise. It doesn't, it, that doesn't give you a gauge as to whether it's hollow or not. So it was absorbing probably all noise. I mean, there would but have to... Maybe just sucking it up. Maybe it radiated into the ground. I have no idea. That's not my area of expertise. All I know is what I what I could see with my own eyes, and ho hopefully uh, by the end of tonight, maybe somebody will have some answer. Yes. What, what did the locals believe about this hole? Well, well, I mean, you literally just got back from Nevada. What tonight or yesterday? Oh no, or this we, last, week. last I, week. I got home the night that you did the show. Uh, as the repeat. That, that's right. You told me. Okay. And, and uh, so it was. It was one of those. Uh, you know, it was probably Richard Hoagland say one of those synchronous moments there where, ooh, you know, I mean, I'm talking to this guy and he's talking to talking to Mel Waters, you know, uh -huh, and, yes. and, and, and the truck, and he and, and then I hear myself and then, and it's like, hey, I mean, so it was, it was just too much, and so I had to, I had to get in touch with you. Okay. Well, again, what did these. Uh, locals, what was the lore uh, that they told you about the hole? What did well, they well, again, one, one, of, one, of, one of the old, older Basque uh, men that I talked to, and this, this was practically as I was heading out of town, uh, he told me that was a very, uh, uh, to him, he felt it was a very spiritual place, but he, he knew the, the thing from his youth, that it was there exactly the way it is, and he was in his late 80s, so I'm assuming he's known it for 70 years. So he's known it at least from the 30s, and from what he tells me, it's been there as long as the Basque had been in that in that part of the country, and that goes well into the 1800s. It has existed like that. Uh, uh, the, to, to be honest, the, the uh, Native Americans that I talked to were aware of it, but they did not want to deal with it. Uh, uh, they They did not want to... Oh, interact interact with it is that a good word? Uh, a word. All, all all they would do is pick some of the uh, uh, the various plants that I needed that were in the general vicinity of it because I wanted very specific ones that I had recommended and they knew of them. All right, uh, are they now growing some of these plants in the vicinity of this hole? Or well, some of those plants are there. They they appear to be uh, indigenous to the area, so uh, they did harvest some. You know, uh, uh, early on in the season there. So then again, you saw similar vegetation around this hole 
to the one in Washington. Well, that, that's what that's why I asked them for. Um, gotcha. You know, if they knew, you know, I described to them what it was, you know, and the shape of the things, and you know, the size of the various. And, and they said, "Oh, yeah, we 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 know of that there." But in, in terms of why why why, uh, why the entree, I assume that the um, the Native Americans knew about this all along there. And I assume that they must have had some conversation with the Basque there that, you know, would this be okay? Are you interested in this guy? Blah, whatever. And apparently there was no objection. So I have access to this property. Well. But I want to respect my access, okay? What about an experiment, Mel, similar to the one you did in Washington, uh, lowering some sort of line or better yet some sort of camera on the end of a line or uh, we 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 didn't we didn't do that uh, between between the Damascus and the uh, the Native Americans and me we we you know we don't have you know too many nickels to rub together but uh uh I will tell you what we did do what one, one of the Basque uh, uh uh kind of a wise uh wise acres <laughs> he wanted to lower some uh uh, marijuana into the hole and see if it would improve its uh, smokability. <laughs> uh, and uh, you so know, then it would be a pothole, right? Uh, well, I guess I guess, I guess it, could, <laughs> it could be that. That I hadn't thought of it that way, but uh, uh, he wanted to do that, and one guy wanted to be lowered into the hole himself. Ah, uh, well, now you see, in the hour preceding your, I business, heard that. Oh, did you? Uh, two I people who that. would actually like to be lowered into such a hole. Now I know that you believed. Uh, in the powers of the whole in Washington to the degree that in the original agreement, now voided, I suppose, you were to be, upon your death, uh, buried by being dropped into the hole, right? How I wanted my remains to be dealt with, yes. Now, that apparently is not going to happen because of subsequent uh, events. Oh, I've, I've got another place to go now. Would you really it's want... Nevada. Yes, would you really want to be... Uh, I suppose when I'm some, gone, with some ceremony, dropped into the hole. Hey, you know, just uh, give me a decent. I don't know what it is when you put someone in a hole. Is that interned or? Uh, I don't know what you'd call that. I, I don't know either. But one one of these guys wanted to go into, you know, literally, he wanted to be lowered into the hole. Uh, he wanted to, you know, be put in a a gondola or something and lowered, you know, from the winch into the. Uh, the hole and, and go down as far as we had line, which again was 1,500 feet. Uh, I can assure you, Mel, uh, we could get sponsors for you who would uh, uh, get you all the line you need. Hey, look, we, we talked them out of going into the hole because we said, look, see what it did to the ice? Uh, that's a good point. It says, we, we, we sent a bucket of ice down into this hole and it's sitting up there on the surface burning. I mean, what are you made out of mostly? Water. Water. What's going to happen to to a human being down there? What what properties are uh, going on over there? Uh, yeah, they had, uh, you know, you know. But I mean, I mean the, the Basque are uh, as as a race are fearless. When the Moors invaded Spain, they refused to go into Basque country. Well, okay, wh what did this man say his motivation was for wanting to go into the hole? I mean, obviously... He, 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 he was just a young, stupid. headstrong, uh, you know, you know, in, in his probably late 20s, early 30s fellow that wanted to go into it. He said, this is going to be a great adventure. I want to go in here. I want to see what's going on. Uh, but he wasn't thinking with his brain. Well, there are obviously a lot of people like that, Mel, because I had two of them in the first hour of the program, and they said they would love to be lowered into such a hole. Well, and well, this one, if anything, this one sounds more attractive. Well, we well, we uh, we determined to do, and, and I'm ashamed to admit it, Oh, is that we decided to lower a sheep. Really? To the hole. Really? A living sheep. You did into the hole. We we had a uh, a crate, you know, the sheep could fit into that we could attach the cables to. And we're going to take the sheep, stick them, you know, stick them in the crate, and then lower them down, you know, to the fifteen hundred foot level because that's all we had. Like the ice. Yeah, that, that that's 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 all we had. You know, I mean, you know, we we, we you know we we had enough line basically to go that far, and it was stout enough to handle. You know, uh, I you know. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm no sheep guy, but I, you know, I could pick up a sheep, so it must weigh about 
120, 150 pounds. Yeah. Well, so I guess about the size of a small human, wouldn't you say? I would, what, 150 pounds? You yeah, said? for sheep. Yeah, I would say that's about the size. Yeah, I'm, a, not, I'm no sheep expert, but, you know, if I had to say, how much does that sheep look like away? Well, about 150, 125 pounds. Anyway, Are you it. telling me you did this? I'm <laughs> telling you that we, uh, well, yeah. first. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. Don't oh. say a word. Uh, good place to hang everybody up. Thank <laughs> you.